everyone, my name is Beth and this is part two of a mini series on my channel about decluttering my life. On my journey to living a more intentional and clutter free life, I'm doing a 30 day decluttering binge here on my channel and I'm calling it the 30 day minimalism challenge in the hopes that by the end of this I'll have sort of been kick started into a more minimalist lifestyle. If you've not seen part one then I'll link it in the cards for you just up there and today actually starts on day 13 so today I'm going to find 13 things to get rid of then tomorrow 14 things the next day 15 things etc you get the idea. Very conveniently the audio for days 13 and 14 has gone it's just disappeared so I'm going to quickly talk you through what happened on those days. If you saw the previous video you'll know that my bookcase collapsed and left a lot of mess all over the floor so day 13 the aim was to get rid of all the clutter that that had left in order to have a nice clean start for this week's video. So I gave the floor a quick tidy and I found a few old books, some wall decal stickers and a couple of ornaments. For day 14 I decided to focus my attention on the desk because it's a big mess. I ended up getting rid of a broken desk tidy and a lot of old Kerrang magazines. now and I'm really struggling. Most of the obvious things are gone now and it's just all the things sort of tucked away and things that I've not dealt with for literally 10 or more years that I'd have to sort through and that's just a big job. Right now I just don't think I can deal with <laughs> the, the commitment that it's going to take to like literally turn my room upside down and sort through everything and then put it all back in place. That's going to take like a week and I just, <laughs> my head's just not in it. We've got the area under my desk, which is just where I shove junk and there's boxes and boxes full of random crap. Then we've got on top of my wardrobe, inside my wardrobe, more and more boxes of crap. And then my clothes, which I need to go through another sort of purge of. Um, and then after that, I'm gonna struggle to actually even think of where to look for stuff that I don't need. I think at that point, that's when it becomes less about decluttering and more on the minimalism side. But we're not there yet, and we've got to find 17 things for today. So I'm going to, I think, because I'm feeling not all that into it, I'm going to go for the top of my wardrobe today, because that's a smaller job than the rest of it. So on the top of my wardrobe, up here, there's not that much stuff. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about is the dust. There's going to be so much dust. <laughs> that I'm gonna get rid of and then there are some other bits from around my room as well. Day 17 I have got two keyboards, one type of keyboard and one music keyboard, where are they? Down there. I found some old music seats which I'm getting rid of, a load of Kerrang and Rock Sound magazines, some old socks and underwear with holes in, I'm not gonna show you those, an old phone charger for an iPhone 4 which one I don't have and two doesn't work and this morning I actually finished this book so I'm going to give it away to charity because I'm not going to read it again, I don't need it. Also on top of my wardrobe there was all my old Michael Jackson memorabilia. So I've got this big sort of wooden poster which I'm going to try and sell. And I've got a calendar from 2012 which I'm going to chuck away because it's got writing on so it's not going to be worth any money. But that's day 17. I'm feeling a bit more inspired now. I've been putting this off but... I think today's the day I tackle the bottom of my wardrobe where I have stored my junk for years. If there's something I don't know what to do with, it goes on the bottom of my wardrobe and I don't have to think about it. I'm kind of terrified to go through this because this is all stuff that I've decided I do need to keep but I don't know what to do with. So in reality, I probably don't need it. I'm thinking this is going to be a lot of like stuff people have given me when I was younger that I feel like obliged to keep. Like a lot of stuff from older relatives, 
and a lot of stuff from my childhood. I think this one's going to be quite a lot of effort. And I've left it till 5.15 in the evening to start. So this is what we're dealing with, and I know it doesn't look that bad because half of it's taken up by my filing cabinet, but I think behind all of it, there's just going to be more and more and more junk. And in fact, the filing cabinet's probably full of junk too. That could probably get me to the end of this 30-day challenge, to be honest. If you hadn't gathered, I was having an extremely lazy day yesterday and just didn't bother filming the stuff for day 18. So I'm going to show you quickly now and then we'll go on to day 19. The first thing is this A2 poster of me as a nine year old and the world famous Chico. For some reason I was a massive Chico fan and I got a printout of me and him for one of my Christmas presents and it used to be up on my, on my door there actually. I've also got a disco light, an old My Chemical Romance calendar. I feel like this is a waste chucking it away because it's got some lovely photos in. And then the rest of the stuff is Angelina Ballerina magazines. Loads of them, there's probably like I don't know, 14 or something. And then with that comes a load of dresses and an Angelina Ballerina doll. I'm gonna try and sell these but I don't think anyone Angelina Ballerinas anymore so they may end up just going in the bin which is a shame. But yeah, that's day 18. And now for the stuff for day 19 quickly. We've got a Boris Johnson mask. I've got a handful of posters. We've got two Blackfoot Brides, Ed Sheeran, All Time Low, and two Kick the PJ ones. I'm gonna see if they're in a fit state to sell. And if not, they'll just get recycled. What else have we got? A pair of broken shoes, some old tops and some swimming costumes. These were just like tucked in the bottom of my wardrobe for some reason. Good morning, everybody. It is the... 15th of August, meaning I have not filmed anything for like a week and a half. I just got back from Spain, I was on holiday last week, which is why this video is so late, because obviously I can't get rid of stuff when I'm not in my house. But if I remember correctly, because it's been a while, it is now day 20 and I need to get a move on because the boot fair that I've been talking about is this weekend. It's in like four days. I'm not ready. I've been feeling really low the last day or so. And honestly, the last thing in the world I want to do right now is make a big mess of my room. But I'm thinking if I just sort of power through it, it will sort of make me feel a bit better because it will be like cleansing my life and getting rid of all the bad thoughts. My plan of action is to remake my bed. I need to change the sheets. And then from there, we'll get on with the actual challenge. <laughs> to tackle my desk. Can you see underneath? Underneath it's a lot worse. Move this chair out of the way. It's where I shove all my junk. I never reach for anything under there apart from maybe one or two little bits. So I don't need any of it. Let's do it. Let's get out of the way. Day 20, let's go. I'm gonna just lean over like this because I can't be bothered to reposition it. So the first thing I'm clearing out is my box which is full of like old tech stuff. I've got a lot of old phones and three Tamagotchis which are probably worth quite a lot of money. I'm gonna chuck out all this stuff and I'm gonna keep this as my tech box so I can keep things like other phone chargers and my DS and stuff like that all organised because it doesn't really have a home at the moment. I think getting rid of a lot of old pairs of headphones and phone chargers for phones which I do not own is a good start. I'm just gonna do some quick googling about whether any of this is worth anything. So first of all, Motorola, what even is this called? Razor something, right? Selling for like $40 on eBay, which is like, I don't know, 30 quid? Okay, so that's potential. I've got a Game Boy Color. Ooh, some of these are worth a bit of money. Oh, I'm gonna sell that. I found an old digital camera, which I didn't even know that I had. This is 7.1 megapixels, so it's not even awful, considering how old it is. Does anyone know what to do with old phones? Because this one is cracked. It's a Samsung, I don't even know what. It was like just before smartphones were a thing, so it's got a touch screen, but that's about it. This website is saying that less than 50% of people recycle electronic waste, but up to 80% of a phone is recyclable. So I'm going to look into that and get rid of my old phones that way, I think. From that box alone, there are 15 things that I'm getting rid of. Most of it's old headphones and chargers and then the stuff I talked you through already. Five more things to go and that's me done for the day. So the last five bits for day 20, 
20. My lovely pair of pink headphones, which are broken and it makes me so sad. Just found a few little bits and bobs under my desk. And then I've got my beloved record player, which I haven't used in probably a year and a half. I don't think it works that well. And everyone else that I've shown it to thinks that it's absolutely fine and they can't hear a problem with it. So maybe it's just my ears and someone else can use this record player and have a great time with it. But I, I want something that's better quality. There's hardly anything, any space cleared and I've already found 20 things. So that's great. Now onto this giant box here, which is really heavy because it's literally just full of school stuff. Spanish GCSE practice reading questions. GCSE German, GCSE German. My certificate books, they can stay. More modern language revision practice. My German and Spanish books from year 11. I kind of want to keep them. English book from year 11, keep that as well. Wow, this is a mess. I'm going to go through that later, but no, that's a mess. My art folder from when I thought I was actually good at drawing when I was about 14, 13, 14, I wasn't. <laughs> the rest of this box is just a lot of junk which has fallen in there over the years because the lid has a hole in it. I found today's 21 items just from that box, which is great, but it makes me think that this 30 day challenge is actually going to be quite easy from now on because I'm planning on this to be the last day in this video and then tomorrow, my tomorrow, will be the start of part three. And my plan for that was solely to focus on my wardrobe and clothes. And if I get rid of as much as I'm hoping to get rid of, then that should bring us to 30 days. Um, and my room still has clutter in, which is amazing. Before I end this video, I wanted to talk quickly about my thought process before I get rid of something. In the past, I have held on to a lot of things because I felt like I had to or I felt like it had meaning to me. So I just wanted to talk you through some of the things I ask myself before I decide I'm going to keep something because that's where the issue lies. It's when I decide to keep something that I don't actually need because, I don't know, I just feel like I need to or that I owe it to someone else to keep it. So the first thing, I suppose the most obvious thing, was when was the last time I used this or looked at this or thought about this even? This is most relevant to clothes, but books and DVDs as well, literally anything to be honest. Um, and if I've never picked it up, then I'm probably not going to, so it goes, that's that. The KonMari method is a really popular one, especially because of the book that goes along with it, and that basically says you gather all your items together and you ask yourself does it spark joy which sounds really cringy but i get what it's trying to say if something isn't positively impacting on my life or doesn't make me happy or to be honest something that makes me sad just because i look at it and think that thing is just taking up space but i feel like i have to keep it that's not sparking joy that's doing the opposite and it probably needs to go then for the really emotional things things like heirlooms the school books that i just went through gifts from loved ones. They're a lot more complicated and this is where I really struggle. I'm trying to sort of streamline them down a bit. So like with the books that I just went through, I sort of kept one from each year or from each subject, something like that. Another example is um, ornaments. Family members give you ornaments. I had loads of Volkswagen mini camper van models from my grandma. I didn't need that many to represent the one memory. Like I've kept one, I've kept the one she gave me for my 18th birthday, which has a little clock on it, so it's like extra special. And that represents the same memory and the same emotions that all of the other ones did. This is actually something I learned from Ugly Betty when I was about 10 or 11. Ugly Betty spoilers, if somehow you've not seen Ugly Betty, but you're planning to watch it. When Santos dies and Hilda has to go through all her stuff and she doesn't want to get rid of any of it because it reminds her of him and it makes her feel like he's still there. But then she decides that she doesn't need all these things to remember him because she knew him and she has those memories firsthand. These objects are kind of just irrelevant and yeah, they're a reminder, but they're not as good a reminder as her actual experience that she had. She decides to keep one thing, which is this really ugly bowling pin lamp stand. It's like a bowling pin with a light bulb on top. And even though she thinks it's ugly and she always hated it, it reminds her of him and makes her laugh. So I've sort of tried to ad adopt that strategy. See, I learned a lot of good lessons from Ugly Betty and I know it's not a kid's show, but I kind of grew up watching it. Talking of Ugly Betty, actually, my sister is currently downstairs cooking me dinner and then we're gonna watch it together. Cause I mean, it's a good show, I love it. <laughs> the final thing I can think of that I ask myself 
is, am I going to realise that I've gotten rid of this? Will it matter to me in two weeks that I don't have this thing anymore? And generally, if I'm asking myself that question, the answer is no. And it's actually kind of a relief when you think about it that way, because I sort of feel all these guilt and negative feelings about throwing something away. And then when I think of it in terms of the future, it doesn't matter anymore because future Beth's already over it. So I should be as well. I'm gonna use these frozen bubbles as an example that are just lying on my bedroom floor. If someone took these bubbles out of my room, I wouldn't notice until the next time I got an urge to blow bubbles, which let's be honest, isn't an urge which occurs regularly. And when it does, it's not particularly strong or important. Then in a week or two weeks or a month's time, I wouldn't care. This little packet of bubbles isn't gonna be around to remind me that it's not around. If you've got any suggestions for me or anyone else watching this video, then I'd love for you to leave them down in the comments because I'm really enjoying this journey so far, this journey. And any way you can suggest to sort of make it easier for me would be wonderful and greatly appreciated. But thank you for watching my minimalism challenge part two. The next part will be up either next week or the week after and I will see you very soon. Bye.